Run Sky is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola, serving Alaskans quality soft drinks since 1937. A special presentation of Heartbeat Alaska, a forum for Native issues and concerns. One voice, one sky. Hello and welcome to One Sky. I'm Jeannie Green. The oil industry and industry in general has been pretty good to the state of Alaska, but it's also brought many people grief. The Valdez oil spill still lingers in the memory and in the lives of our people of Alaska. And now, there are some contaminations being found out in the Cook Inlet, right out here outside of Anchorage. John Ted Pond talked with Julia DeMott, Percy Blatchford, and Tony Dizon. Percy Blatchford is a native elder. He lives in Anchorage, and he still practices the subsistence lifestyle. Where bright angel feet have trod. He's been called a gentle giant with the strength of an ox when he needs it. The kind of guy who would do anything for a friend and probably a stranger. Percy Blatchford was born in Golovin in 1920. He was raised by his grandmother in Elam. Together they struggled to survive in the cold Arctic by living off the land. My grandmother taught me how to hunt. Her and I used to go hunting, seals, hunt whale, everything she taught me. What she taught me, I learned when I went through military training. That's where I learned from her. Percy's training continued in the Air Force, where after 30 years, he finally retired in 1972. He's believed to be the first Eskimo to retire with 30 years of military service. As a pararescuer, he received the Air Force Commendation Medal for a rescue performed in Panama in 1965. The toughest course I ever had was Special Force training, underwater dem demolition school. We have to go through Navy SEAL Team School. When we save somebody's life, it's worth it. When we pull a and especially on a wreck or in any place. We're in disaster area. When you save somebody's life, your job is done. You Percy, can see more. you've done a, a lot of work in the subsistence area. You've done a, a, a lot of um, advocating for subsistence rights, uh, especially for people here living here in Anchorage and in urban areas. Um, You've just started, uh, or you're involved in the formation of a, a um, Marine Mammal Council, the Cook Inlet uh, um, Marine Mammal Council, which would uh, try to, to influence la laws and regulations on, about hunting uh, uh, beluga whale and other marine mammals in the Cook Inlet area. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Why, why are you, you and, uh, and a group of people going in that direction? The uh, reason we're starting, trying to start this is because uh, some of the animals across there have sickness mm -hmm. and uh, want to know what's causing it, and same as fish. Uh, like beluga, some of them have uh, all kinds of sores now. Mm -hmm. they, they and and you've seen that just recently? Yeah, I did that within, within about six years. Okay. We noticed it. And, uh, but there's no more seals across there in the uh, mouth of Big Sioux. There used to be a lot of them. And now, within three years, hardly any now. You don't see very many there seals. Very few seals over there now. And, and beluga whales, you've been hunting those over there since? Uh, 1946. So you know a lot about, uh, about the, uh, the hunting yeah. and, and, uh, across the bay. Um, Tell me a little bit about what's happening. What what could be happening uh, as far as the 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 whales and and showing up with what appear to be sores on on their on their um, on the muktuk. Yeah, and I think what causing it after that oil spill, uh, 
They claim oil didn't come up here, but the oil was up there in some of the sloughs over there. Mm -hmm. They put in high tide, bring it in. Yeah, we're talking about the Exxon oil spill in 80, 80, uh, 89. Yeah, right? Yeah, and then I think it caused, I think the sickness are causing from the oil because when you go through oil, even your, if you just fall in where there's a uh, oil leak, and if you didn't wash that out of your body, you're going to get sick. Mm -hmm. You've got to wash it out. Yeah. Same as those animals across uh, inland here. And then, uh, but when you go out there now, you'll see oil slick just about every time you go across there now. Present? L later. Today? Yeah. You can see April it. April 1994. Yeah, you can see. But this year I didn't go out yet, but I'm going to go out as soon as I uh -huh. comes out. We'll, we'll take a... The, the Coquitlam Marine Mammal Council sup, uh, is supposed to do uh, something. Uh, what, I what is its purpose? Uh, the, the, it's going to Coast Guard going to be involved in this and find out what causing the oil, where the oil is coming from. Okay. And, the, and find, try to find out where, why the, the uh, marine mammals uh, such as beluga sick. are getting sick. Yeah, they really that's the main thing. Otherwise, otherwise, if we uh, we have to test them, and then if they eat it, uh, they get sick. Otherwise, mm -hmm. la last uh, two years ago, I we got a whale, and we got it tested, and I sent it out. I couldn't find anything, so I went to college, and then they helped me to where to send it to. Mm -hmm. We sent it to Wisconsin. I'm pretty sure. And then it have eight different kind of sicknesses. Mm -hmm. But if you boil the meat up to 25 minutes, it'll kill the bacteria. Mm -hmm. so. so, so the beluga from across the uh, inlet uh, at the mouth of uh, the Big Sioux is is safe to eat, in your opinion? And yeah, if you but you have to know what to look for. Uh huh. You have to. Uh, when you butcher it, you have to open the lungs and check the lungs if they get any spots or liver, if mm -hmm. they have any spots in the mm -hmm. liver. And then you can see their body on the whale. If there's any sores, don't. Oh, don't, don't touch it. Don't, don't eat it. Yeah. And take a, take a sample of it and take it in back here in a, so they'll test it. Okay. You've been involved uh, for quite a number of years, uh, maybe more, uh, in in advocating subsistence, fishing and hunting rights for people such as yourself and myself, who, people who live in their urban centers. Uh, should we be allowed, as, as, uh, as native people who live in Anchorage, Fairbanks, and Juneau, Ketchikan, and w wherever uh, Alaska law or, or federal law for that matter, uh, says that we, we, we cannot because we're urban residents. How do you feel about that? I don't really care, but uh, uh, we're born and raised up here, but I think we have, we can go out what we want to get. I mean, just get what you yourself you uh -huh. need, it, and then don't take more than you can handle. So, you know? so, <coughs> so urban native residents of urban centers uh, should be able to 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 carry on the cultural tradition um, <coughs> that our our cousins and our relatives in in village villages across the state is have right. <coughs> That's right. I'm, I'm Even though we live in Anchorage. Yes, sir. We because we got to eat. That's all what we raise on. So the, it, it's a matter of cultural tradition. It's a uh, um, uh, a matter of uh, being able to partake in. Uh, in, in our in our native food and being allowed to have the same kind of subsistence hunting rights and, and fishing rights as anybody else in, in, in lower Yukon or up around Nome um, is that the way it should be yes yes sir it, you gotta yeah, people gotta eat yeah we, we gotta eat and then what we have we we can't waste it we have to take what we mm -hmm. take like up my when we was growing up Remember in uh, Norton Bay? Yeah. That we didn't have any fish and wildlife or no agents, but we get what we needed and stop. Yeah. 
for our, so we can live off. That's the way we were raised. Yeah, that's why yeah. we were raised, yes. Um, <coughs> we were also raised uh, to, to hunt and fish during the season, okay? Yes, 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 sir. Yeah. You know, when, when, when the birds came in the spring, we hunted birds. Uh, when the ice opened, we hunted seals. Um, those, that, that was what I call management by season. Uh, we, we don't do that very much anymore. No, no. How has that affected native culture, do you think? It, uh, some, uh, some, especially older people, they, it affects them because uh, they got, they, they're used to that eating, that kind of, but you know, like if I eat white man food, I get hungry right away. Okay. But if I eat native food, you can last, you know, you, you don't get hungry right away. Yeah. You, if you feel good, you don't get sick. So, so the, the um, hunting by season, w which is not allowed, at least in the bird hunting area, um, how, 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 does, how has that affected native elders, do you think, who, who, who see the birds come in spring and, and the law says you can't go out and hunt? How has that affected native people? But they like to go hunting, but they can't. I know. They, they can't hunt anymore now. So it kind of bothered them, I think, you know. It's, it's, it's sort of put the culture in a, a, um, in a lurch, uh, I think. Um, and, and a lot of Native people, especially the elders, uh, t talk a lot about that. Uh, we have to go to break, uh, break again, per Percy, but we'll be right back. Uh, we'll be back with Percy Blasford in a minute. The reason why we choose and have chosen to live with the Earth is that because we come from the Earth, there's no hiding from the Earth, and one day when that time comes, they're going to become part of the Earth. If you end up having some dirt in your house, I always think about it as not dusting it off right away. It's like somebody else has become part of the earth and that person is visiting. Talking with uh, Percy Blatchford uh, about the subsistence uh, issue in Cook Inlet, but we have brought here for a few minutes a, uh, the co-chairman of the Cook Inlet Management uh, Marine Management Council, right? Correct. Cook Inlet Marine Mammal Council. Okay. Tony Dizon. Uh, Tony, uh, Percy was uh, talking about the uh, council a little bit and, and w why it's formed. Uh, can you add a little bit more information to that? Yes, thank you for having us here. Uh, I'm the co-chairman of the Cook Inlet Marine Mammal Council. Mm -hmm. uh, Denty Owens is the other co-chairman. Uh, Perry, Percy Blatchford and Mike Secu are the vice presidents. Perry Dimick and uh, Art Naglin are the treasurer secretary and Rick Toktu are the sergeant at arms. We'll also be receiving representatives from the Cook Inlet Tribal Council villages as well as Chugatchmi villages. Mm -hmm. But basically the, the council was uh, organized to uh, protect and preserve the wise management of our marine mammals in the Cook Inlet. Uh, we want to protect our cultural privacy of subsistence mm -hmm. across the inlet and we are very opposed to any state fish and game efforts to regulate our subsistence in the Cook Inlet. When you talk about s hunting in the, in the Cook Inlet, you're what animals and ma marine mammals do you include there? Primarily our uh, whaling captains and crews uh, primarily hunt the beluga whale uh -huh. and uh, the harbor seal and the sea otters. Okay. So those are the three main marine mammals that okay. subsist. So under, under federal and state law, the, the native, native people are allowed, I want to make this clear, uh, are allowed to hunt those three species. Is that correct? No, we're allowed, under the Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1972, Congress uh, gave the indigenous groups 
uh, of Native Americans, Alaska Natives, mm -hmm. the exclusive rights to okay. hunt and use marine mammals. And marine mammals range from beluga whales to sea otters okay. to uh, sea lions. So, yeah, th th there's, there's been a lot, a lot of confusion about uh, uh, which groups of Native people are allowed to hunt and subsist, okay? And there, there's a confusion about um, whether Native people who live in urban centers can hunt and fish as uh, our, our, our uh, relatives in, in Village, Alaska can. Right. Where, where is that at? Well, now? we stand, uh, I'm a, uh, my Native heritage originated up north in Point Hope, and, okay. and a lot of Natives in Anchorage originated elsewhere, yeah. and then we reside here in Anchorage. Anchorage is recognized as a village. Uh, we by, have, by whom? By the National Marine Fisheries. Oh, okay, I see. And uh, by the federal government. And now that the ruling of subsistence law included all navigable waters, yeah. and Cook Inlet is a navigable waterway, and therefore uh, Alaska Natives who live in urban centers are allowed to exercise their subsistence rights. So therefore, we have been exercising our subsistence right towards marine mammals for generations. Yeah, yeah I know Percy was talking about hunting belugas out there in yes. 1940, since 1946. Yeah. Um, very few people know about the, the, the hunting uh, yeah. of, of marine mammals yes. close to Anchorage exactly. uh, and how native people here in, in the city of Anchorage uh, uh, you know, go out there to, to practice yeah. the traditional uh, ways. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, we, we, uh, we continue to have uh, conflicts about um, in the state is, is the, uh, the fact that um, urban natives should have or could have the same rights as rural natives. Where, where, where is that issue at at this point? That issue is uh, pretty much intact here in Anchorage as far as uh, our council is concerned. We are Alaska Natives. We are exercising our indigenous mm -hmm. rights as Alaska Natives. And uh, this subsistence has been passed on from generations. Percy's been doing it since 1946. I've been doing it only since the early 80s. Mm -hmm. But it's been passed on to generations to generations. And I intend to pass this on to my uh, daughters and mm -hmm. sons. But uh, uh, the issue of subsistence in the urban centers, it's happening. We, we do it on a low-key basis. We haven't really received a lot of coverage, but there's a lot of muktuk out there that, that's okay. hunted by our Anchorage uh, natives. And so the, Mar uh, the Cook Inlet Marine Mammal Council, then, uh, then its purpose would be to help the, uh, the uh, National Fisheries and National Marine, marine Mammal, mammal yeah, Fisheries, right. to, to set down some rules and regulations as to the hunting of marine mammals Ex out there. Exactly. Cook Inlet is very, uh, they have uh, already admitted that they have little knowledge of marine mammals in the Cook Inlet. Mm -hmm. They don't know their migration patterns. Uh, especially our whales is our own Cook Inlet stock. They do not migrate north. Okay. They stay in the Cook Inlet uh, basin, and that's our own stock. Okay. And the National Marine Fisheries would like to know more about that through scientific studies, and they're willing to fund our council to do these studies for okay. them. We have to go to break now, uh, but we'll, we'll be right back after this work. If you have news or information from your community that you would like to share with our viewers, please contact One Sky, 2611 Fairbanks Street, Suite D, Anchorage, Alaska, 99503, or give us a call at area code 907-272-8111, or fax us at 272-7005. One of the things you're, you're going to do, I, I understand, is you're going to Washington, D.C. to talk to, to, the, to different people, including the White House, right. about some of the uh, uh, problems that the people in 
the Prince William Sound area have mm -hmm. faced since that spill. What are you going to be talking about? Well, one of the things that I will be talking about uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, is about the oil spill, how it has affected our native people mm -hmm. in the Prince William Sound and also the non-natives, okay, in the fisheries. Mm -hmm. uh, I, sp I suppose you already know, or you probably read it in the uh, papers, how our herring, you know, had a lot of yeah. lesions. And yeah. this has been uh, like two years in a row now. And uh, uh, not only that, our hooligan runs have been, they're, they're gone. And one of the things I did ask one of the fishermen that when they were seining out there, I says, uh, I, I would like to know exactly where the hooligan are coming from? Are they mm -hmm. going through the sound, mm -hmm. you know? So I said, yeah. He says, uh, Bob Hendricks said, yeah, we picked them up in our seine. And I said, well, that's, that's it then. That's what's going on, coming through the sound and then going to the rivers, you know, and there's nothing there. So most of our seafood, crab, uh, is depleted. Uh, I was talking to somebody down in the state side and it's Christmas time. And they said, what do you want for Christmas there in Cordova? We want some Dungeness crab. And it used to be one of the biggest Dungeness. There's uh, the depletion uh, level. Where is it at? Is it, are they completely gone, or are, are they diminished? Or, or wh where is that at? Well, it's out in the sound. And uh, now and uh, there we, we had a couple Native people went out in front of the uh, docks there and went down. They said, uh, it was my brothers, OK? Mm -hmm. And they said, Julia, you know, you can smell that oil. It's coming, Today? coming in. Yeah, the other day. Really? Said so you can smell it, and they said, you know, it's so sad that, uh, you know, that's one of the things I'm going to be talking about because Exxon, you know, they're trying to say there's nothing wrong out there, and that's not so. Our, uh, How has that affected the, the cultural, uh, the cultural part of the lifestyle of the EAC people and Native people in, in Prince William Sound? Well, for one thing, a lot of our people, they uh, like in the villages and also Cordova, people put their salmon up and put salt salmon mm -hmm. up and uh, and smoked salmon, and it's just it's not there. Of course, you know that uh, last year the seining was like, oh, it was it was bad. Uh, it's since uh, 1989, <coughs> there have been reports of, of ongoing problems. So it's been, what, four years? Yeah, about four years. How has that affected, how has the spill affected the lifestyle of the people, like in places like Chenega, Tetitlik, Cordoba, uh, wh what's happened there? Well, we feel that the natives, you know, have lived and subsisted in the Prince William Sound for thousands of years, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, without one incident. Okay, and here comes the Exxon oil spill the Prince William Sound, it has impacted, you know, uh, every aspect of our ecosystem. And so your, your mission here then is to, to go to Washington, D.C. And, and get some kind of help uh, uh, of what will, what, will be, what will you be looking for? <sighs> well, one of the things I want to tell them that I'm trying to get a culture center there in Cordova mm -hmm. and bring our culture back to our people because uh, they're going to have to learn how to live and uh, sew their furs, beadwork, and because I do believe that uh, we shall never know how uh, devastating the oil spill has been to our people's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard more or less that there's been a lot of damage and, and there's uh, not a whole lot of uh, uh, I mean, there, there are two sides talking here. The oil company is saying that there's not a whole lot of damage, and there are people from the Prince William Sound region who are saying, including the people at Chugach Mute, uh, who, who I talked with this morning, um, that there has been a lot of damage and it hasn't been assessed well yet at this point. And there needs to be a lot of work to, to bring the Prince William Sound to where it used to be. Well. We think that uh, it's going to take a long time for it to come back to the way it is. We know down there in Old Town, I've lived down there in that area mm -hmm. 
the village, old, you know, we all live together, the Aleuts, well, Eax, and whatever, and... Where's Old Town? The, in Cordova, I'm sorry, in Cordova, okay. Alaska, this old, t they call it Old Town, okay? Is, is it up By the lake, by okay. the Eax Lake. Yeah. So here we are, I, I couldn't believe it, right across from the village office, you know, I saw like 30 eagles, and I said, my God, what is this, you know? Where are they coming from? They're hungry, mm -hmm. people are feeding them. And then I have a friend out there that lives in the bay out the ways, you know, by... Uh, Heart me being that area, and she said these eagles are coming down and suit and getting trying to attack the the uh, seagulls, and they're hungry, hmm. you know. And my husband was out there. He f we f we have a uh, fishing license there in Cordova, and uh, a permit. Fish. And he said that uh, it was sad because there was nothing for them to eat. The you know like the eagles, you mean the plankton and yeah. for the fish and. You know, so that's what's happening. They're t talking about disease. Uh, hey, that's this has never happened in for Prince William Sound, you know, until after the oil spill. Our, my people and the non natives are used to living off the land, especially my peop my native people, and that's not only just in Prince uh, Cordova, Alaska, but that's the uh, uh, Port uh, Port Graham, English Bay. Okay, that covers a lot. Yeah, it does. You know, it's uh, like at one time there in the Prince William Sound, there used to be like 55 villages in the Prince William Sound, okay? Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, uh, you know, after the flu and everything, people in 1910. But anyway, so we're survivors, okay? The native people are survivors. You will see that, you know. We're all survivors. We'll make it, but I'll tell you one thing that we sure need our native foods out there. I mean, you know what, like uh, herring uh, eggs. Okay, herring yeah, eggs, that's mussels. Another good, so. another good. Yeah. yeah, sea eggs. You know, badarkies. I mean, they call them. You know what I mean? Those yeah. ones that stick on the rock. Are, are there is, are there any of those left? I mean, can no, you, no, no, uh, no herring eggs on on the. On well, the they top? had a, they had a herring season, and it was nilch. We've been talking with uh, Julia Barnes de Mott of Cordoba, Eak tribe. No, Aleut. Uh, Aleut tribe? Aleut, Aleut, yep. Aleut <laughs> Sorry about that. Got to keep these things straight. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here on One Sky. I'm Jeannie Green. If you have any suggestions for discussions, please give us a call at 272-8111. See you next week. <laughs>